Hi everyone, it's Penny once again, and I am honored to be here with my friend Beck Jennings from Australia, and uh, <laughs> she's she's a colleague of mine at Hudson, and I'm working with Hudson for coaching. So, Beck, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Penny. Thank you very much for the invite. I'm very happy to be chatting and joining your worldwide colleagues. Um, Beck Jennings is my name. I was a career coach with Hudson. Um, I also do some mediation work as well outside of Hudson. Um, you know, some workshop stuff, some private coaching as well. So a bit of a mixed bag in terms of some things that I do. Um, so looking forward to the conversation. Oh, yeah, Beck came over to the Philippines last year, right? Mm. Uh, and you spent a week in Manila. So how was that experience for you coming to the Philippines? Oh, it was lovely. I um, hadn't been before. It was, I felt, I just felt really safe actually just wandering around when I first got there. I think what I do with any international spots, new places I go to is just getting around and walking around. And I really, um, I, yeah, I felt really safe just, just walking around. I actually got interviewed by some high school students. They were trying to do some thing just about how foreigners are enjoying, uh, you know, the location and where they've come from. Um, and they said they hadn't had much of a hit rate for people stopping and chatting to them. So I said, oh, stop and chat, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love that. And, and Beck, where are you from in, in Australia? In Melbourne, Melbourne, um, Australia. Okay, in Melbourne. Okay, yeah. so how is it there now with the with the COVID situation? Yes, yeah, so we've moved into uh, encourage strongly encouraged to work from home wherever you can work from home. Um, a number of non essential businesses and services have been closed. So um, essentially, any sports. It's not really about minimizing gatherings. So. Um, all, all sports and recreation centres and gyms have closed, cinemas have closed, restaurants and cafes can only serve takeaway, um, supermarkets are all still open, um, you know, and all the, I guess, service companies in terms of keeping things going and infrastructure going uh, are all still working, in, including banks and what else is still going, or well, anything around health, obviously, anything health related, mm -hmm. you know, GPs, hospitals, medical centres, all those things. Um, interesting, the interesting one that's causing most debate at the moment is about hairdressers, but they're still allowed to remain open, but you can only be in there for 30 minutes. Oh, really? But, but you're still meant to be maintaining social distancing rules. So the social distancing rules talk about, you know, one and a half to two metres between people, which is obviously impossible to do as a hairdresser. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the one that's getting a bit of debate. Oh, um, that's going to yeah, that's going to be hard. You know, what have you, I am having my colored, my hair colored. It, it takes more than thirty minutes. I know, right? So this is an opportunity for all of us to all these hairs, all these highlights, these foils <laughs> to grow out, as to all go back natural. Embrace the gray. That's one of our opportunities. Embrace the gray. I love that. Embrace the gray. That's new. Yeah. That's new yeah. for me. No worries. <laughs> So, so Beck, how, how has your work been affected with the coaching, with this new, the new well, normal? Well, the new normal becomes these kind of conversations. Um, Zoom, team, Microsoft Teams, what, um, FaceTime, uh, Messenger, any other variation, or just a simple phone um, and not having the video element to it. So the coaching conversations continue to happen, especially the project that I'm working on with, with you at uh, through Hudson at ANZ, they're continuing to go ahead with a number of their organisational changes. And a big one at the moment is happening that's more impacting Australia. So, um, and the announcement of that change happens on the 7th of April and, and we understand they're continuing with that. So there will be a number of people that um, will be seeking coaching. So I expect to, instead of working two days a week with Hudson, potentially I'll be working three days a week with Hudson. Um, assuming they can pay me. <laughs> so they're obviously, as an organisation, having some challenges probably on the recruitment side because it's seeing a little bit of less volume on that. Oh, so, yes. um, so let's assume for a moment now that I'm pretty sure that ANZ will be able to continue to pay for the service. So I would assume that ANZ, um, Hudson would therefore be able to 
continue to pay their coaches. So I think for me personally, there'll be some more demand over these next few months, but the mode of delivery will be, they'll get to see my kitchen in my studio. <laughs> um, I have worked out how to do virtual back backgrounds in Zoom, but my Mac um, apparently doesn't, is not, an upgraded enough version to be able to cope with the virtual backgrounds. So either I just need to be comfortable with people seeing my kitchen or upgrade my computer to get a virtual background. No, it's okay. This is the new reality. Yeah. In, in fact, I was, I was just reading Facebook or YouTube. No, no, no. I think it's LinkedIn. The new reality is you're at home. I'm in my bedroom. As yeah. you can see, the television, the vitamins, yeah. the books, the face, yeah. the mirror. And there was this reporter from BBC who was reporting up from home. And his daughter runs to him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the new reality. That's well, I was doing, uh, I did a mediation last week on Teams, Microsoft Teams. So um, the two participants were obviously in, in, at their homes as well. And my cat was in my studio with me the whole time and then sleeping the whole time, right, as she does. And then she wandered up right at the end when everyone was happy and saying goodbye. So I just picked her up and said, and Smelly says, well done. <laughs> I'm talking about cats. My cat is sleeping in my bed. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's interesting times for us, for us career coaches, that, that we may see more work coming in. Uh, which is good and not good mm -hmm. because if even if people transition, where do they transition to? Mm. So that's the big question. Yeah, and so, I think the main, and I think that's the hardest bit of getting a handle on what the key messaging is. I think my when I'm talking about my key messaging around that is is really that seeing this next phase as a bridge. It's a bridge just to something else, either back to a new normal. It will still be different. I think what our normal is in future but it's very much a bridge so what could you do in this next phase this bridge phase that satisfies that purpose meaning and connection which when you have those right you've got your well-being you've got your you know you're able to optimize that what does that look like and what does it look like for people and that in that bridge piece it could be that you're going to do some work that you would never otherwise thought of doing so for Australia, there's um, lots of work in supermarkets. There's lots of work at our government support office of Centrelink because there's a lot of people who have now, you know, a million people out of work that used to be casual workers at restaurants and cafes mm -hmm. that don't have that work anymore. Any job that's closed down. So they're all lining up virtually and physically to go to those outlets. So the government said, well, I'm putting 5,000 new jobs in, that, in our government support area for the demand. Um, I know that having chatting to someone at NAB, um, they're encouraging their permanent workforce to now be in front line to be able to help customers with their mm -hmm. conversations. So there's a move to um, to adjust existing workplaces to, for that demand, for that support. So all the things that are still going, all the logistics operations, Operations, anything to do with food, anything to do with medical, anything to do with health, anything to do with the infrastructure, they're still working and still happening and they need more people. Mm -hmm. So in this bridge phase of people, what is that work that you could do that may not be the same that what you've done in the past? So how could you leverage that in this bridge phase? And then you're in the later role that's more akin to, I guess, what you what's in your, your, your skill set of doing, but you're going to have another skill set. You're going to have another thing to add to it to take to that. Mm -hmm. Or this bridge phase mm -hmm. might be, hey, what's something you want to learn about that you haven't had the opportunity to? So what study can you do? What learning can you do? What else can you do? Or, you know, if you can afford to um, not work or, or in terms of um, tapping on the government support that's available, what, what hobby or skill do you want to develop now? Because that's another thing that you can do in this bridge phase. Exactly. I think the bridge phase and being able to, to do something different and be able to you know, learn something different is very important as well. Mm -hmm. So in, in the bridge phase, maybe there's no bridge space for you because you'll be more busy. No. How can people, feeling depressed and feel, feeling overwhelmed, we as coaches, how can we help them and what advice can you give for those people who just lost their jobs and are uncertain about the future? Yeah. I think it's, it's the same kind of things about you've got to get down to purpose, meaning, connection. 
where are those things? How can you find those things? So where is it? So whatever your scenario is, if, if you're in the house and you can't go out, okay, where is my purpose, meaning and connection here? In terms of connection, I think that's one of the easy ones because exactly what we're doing now, mm -hmm. everyone can do. I've had a lot of friends having Zoom dinner parties. So cool, I can have plenty of those. And, and we're trying to work out what is the protocol of it. Should we be eating when we're having them or should we eat first? Well, so of course you should be eating during them because that's the whole point of it. Because part of it's about food envy. Like what are you eating versus what I'm not eating? <laughs> so we're, phys we're physically distancing ourselves. We're not socially distancing ourselves. Yeah, that's right. That's it's right. It's a very, very important distinction, right? And, so and, that, mm -hmm. You know, how, do you, how do you keep that connection in that purpose and meaning or how do you create that purpose and meaning is it through that skill development is it through a, a learning is it through um finding a different way of doing something of a different way of working but it's that's the, that's the core what you fill it with that's the i think the opportunity what do you feel that purpose meaning and connection with but that's the core core of it so that's the conversation I think should happen around those aspects because it's 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 never our job as coaches to solve that for someone exactly our, our clients our participants are are the experts on themselves it's never about catching their fish the old one right it's always about teaching them how to fish so taking them back to those core pieces purpose meaning and connection what how does that make sense for you we might have some suggestions we might have some information but it's theirs to solve so we need to be really careful i think that we don't keep away from that and make sure we don't solve it for them yes okay i love that purpose i wrote it down purpose meaning and connection so i know you have another phone call so is there any all of us have so many calls every day <laughs> so is there any other advice that you'd like to give people in Australia, in New Zealand, people around the world, whatever time of day or night it is? Yeah. I, any I other it's, advice? It's, it's the opportunity. It's embrace the opportunity. This is, you may find yourself having more time on your hands. And with that more time on your hands, what, how can you value that time and, and do something with it? How can you leverage that opportunity? Whether it's, even just taking that time because you've got it to reflect, reflect on things. Well, how's, how's things been going? Where's my, you know, what really makes me happy? How can I get more of that? What's my plan for now? What's my plan for later? Even I was reflecting on knowing I was going to have this conversation with you today. What are the different things that happened yesterday that would otherwise not have happened? So I, I, I baked some gingerbread from scratch. I've never done that before. Someone, a friend had sent me that recipe and oh yeah, cool. It's called Nigella's Moist Gingerbread Cake. This is great. Um, so I had a crack at it. I, I went to the supermarket because I needed to go there to get some baking stuff. Um, the checkout operator said, oh, you must be doing some baking. And I go, I am. It's never, it's never a bad time for gingerbread, is it? Um, I did um, a different kind of webinar, a different model. I think it was, no, sorry, I did a webinar on Zoom offered a webinar about learning about Zoom, more about Zoom. So great, I did that. Um, my neighbor came and knocked on my door and gave me a box of face masks. Oh, wow. He, he had done an order or something and his order had come in. So we were like standing two meters apart and giving each other these face masks. So it had an interaction with my neighbor that I would have about that, that I otherwise would not have had. And then I did an outdoor gym session in my backyard. So all these things I had never done before, I got to do um, because, of, because of this. So it's embrace the opportunity. I love that. I love that embrace the opportunity. You said so many things that I wrote down. Reflect on things that are important to you. Embrace the opportunity, purpose, meaning, and connection. I love it. You know, we only talk once a month or once every two months and mm. it's business, business, business. I think this is the first time we're talking not about business, but about yeah. life. Well, we, we can probably change our agenda then on those meetings, I reckon, and talk more about life. That'll be much more fun. And that would be more fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Beck. And thank you for spending time with me in this conversation. And you... 
keep safe. And we know that, you know, we are in many, many countries, we do our own thing, but this, this, this situation is making us just one. It's just one human race. And we all have to stay safe. That's right. Thank you very much, Penny. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And you stay, stay, stay safe too. And do your baking and your exercise. It was pretty good. It was pretty funny. <laughs> okay. So when you come back to the Philippines, bring some. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Beck. See you Thank soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.